What's up you guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this super simple concealment flag. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is get my uh, one by twos cut. I'm gonna be doing this flag with a with the union as one piece. Um, I haven't tried that yet, so I'm gonna give it a try. So what I'm gonna do first is cut six of my one by twos at 37 inches, and then I'm gonna cut seven of them at 22 and a quarter inches. Uh, if you don't wanna do the separate union, then you'll just cut all of your one by twos. Uh, you'll need 13 pieces at 37 inches. All right, so now that I got those pieces cut, uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna, I just got a clamp put on the top uh, seven pieces, the smaller ones, and I'm just gonna grab this measurement, and uh, this measurement, I'm just gonna use that to cut my width for my union. Uh, so we got 10 and 3 eighths, and the reason I'm measuring this uh, is because these are supposed to come at an inch and a half. Um, so this should be 10 and a half, but as you can see, um, some of them are like a 16th short, and then over the course of seven of them, it does end up being smaller than it should be. Um, so that way, if you just clamp these together and measure that, then you won't have an oversized union and then that'll just help to make it um, line up a little bit better. Uh, so now I'll just rip, I'll cut a piece of this at uh, 14 and three quarter long, and then I'm gonna rip it at 10 and three eighths. All right, so now that we got our union cut, uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna, I just got a clamp on there, just got everything tight together. And then I'm gonna pull this measurement. Uh, so we got 19 and 3 sixteenths. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just go uh, an inch and three quarter uh, short of that measurement. So mine will be uh, 17 and 5 eighths. And then what that's gonna do is it's gonna leave us enough room for the box behind the flag for the backers to fit inside that. So then you should have around 7 eighths of an inch um, of space on either side. And then uh, that should give it enough room so that uh, the backers will fit inside the frame. Um, so that is what you're gonna cut your backers at, whatever that measurement is. Um, and I'm just using this uh, one by three. Um, so I'm gonna cut four pieces at that measurement. All right, so now that I got all my boards cut, uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is take my palm sander uh, with some 220 grit sandpaper on it and I'm just gonna go through and just do a quick sand over all the faces. All right, so next up I'm gonna go through and torch them all. And uh, you can torch them pretty much however you want to, but I like to go, I like to try to do it a little darker on the edges and then a little bit lighter in the middle. Uh, so I just got my uh, propane torch here. And then I'll also torch the ends of it. Then I went ahead and threw a couple dark spots in there. Um, but like I said, you can do it however you want to. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these torched. All right, so now that we got those all torched, now we're ready to stain. Uh, for the red, I have some scarlet. Uh, the blue is navy blue, and the white is just white. Uh, if you get the blue from Lowe's, it will be true blue. Uh, depending on which Home Depot you go to, they might have the scarlet. 
Uh, so hopefully you can find uh, the three colors at your local Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, and I just use a rag to stain. And usually I'll do two or three coats of the red and blue, and then usually I'll do like three or four coats of the white. Um, but you can do however many coats you want to, depending on how dark or light you want it and how much you want the, uh, the wood to show through. Um, and then I'm also going to stain my edges, uh, these inside edges. Um, on the very edge, I'll stain the whole thing, and then I'm gonna stain uh, these end pieces as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these all stained. Alright, so now that we got these all stained, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and get my stars done on my union uh, so we can clear away all this other stuff. Alright, so then for my union, um, I'm just going to take the stencil here. I can go ahead and link this in the description. Um, and I'm just going to tape it on there and then I'm going to trace it out with a pencil. You can use a regular pencil, otherwise I've used a, a white colored pencil before and that seems to show up pretty good. Uh, and then once I got them all traced, then I'm gonna take my Dremel here. I just got a Dremel 3000 um, and then I have a flex shaft um, and then I got a dust blower on the end and then to outline the stars, I'll use a 105 carving bit and then to carve out the middles, I will use a 106 carving bit. Uh, so I'll use the 105 to outline and the 106 to carve out the middles. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, trace these out and carve them out and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so now that we got that all carved out, um, I actually ended up using the 107 bit um, for most of carving out the middles and that actually worked quite well. It's pretty big, so it, it did a pretty good job cleaning them out. And uh, this next part is optional, uh, but what I'm gonna do is take, I just got this pack, I just got these small brushes and I'm gonna go through and add a coat of the white stain inside the stars just to give them a whiter tint. But if you don't want to do this, then you don't have to. And what I'll do is just take a glob of it and then just kind of spread it around. Um, so I can go ahead and show you real quick what that looks like. All right, so now that I got the star stained, uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is flip the whole thing over onto its face. 
All right, so now that we got it flipped over, uh, make sure when you flip it over, you swap your union to the other side and then double check and make sure that your stars are facing the right way as well, uh, just so that doesn't get flipped over. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a mark at uh, one inch and 13 and a half inches uh, from either side. And then that is gonna be um, where I'm gonna put my backers. I'll put my backers on the insides of those lines. Um, so one should end up uh, right halfway between these two. And then I'll start on the right side and I'll go ahead and just clamp it over here. I'll glue the back of this and I'll glue the back of the flag really well. And then I'll go ahead and uh, use my 18 gauge brad nailer here. I got inch and a quarter nails and I'll go ahead and put some nails. I'll do two per stripe or maybe three per stripe. And then I'll just, just spread a couple out in here as well. Um, before I nail it though, I am going to check. I just have these two uh, scraps here and I just want to check and make sure that there's a little bit of a gap. Um, just kind of like center it between there um, just to make sure that it will have room to fit inside the case. Um, so I just want to double check that before I nail it and then I'll just clamp it as I go down. I'll start on the right side and move to the left side and then for this right in the middle you just want to um, do your best to make sure that these are all pushed up um, as tight as you can against um, this piece and then um, you can also push on it at the end too just to make sure that they're straight with all the other stripes. Um, and then just glue across that seam. And then if you just put some nails in there, uh, that should hold it pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all nailed and glued together and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so now we got that all um, nailed up so you can flip it over and uh, just make sure that there wasn't any glue coming through the front of it, but there shouldn't be just since um, we mostly just put it on the back, uh, but you can double check that just to make sure. And then now we're gonna go ahead and start on the box. All right, so for my border, uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these bigger pieces ripped down. I'm gonna rip mine at four and three quarter. Uh, these, are, these are bigger pieces. These are just scraps that I'm using. Um, so if you want to buy lumber for this, you'd probably want to buy one by sixes if you want them to be big enough. Um, and I'm going to rip mine at four and three quarter, and that should give me roughly three and a half inches of space on the inside. Um, so if you want yours to be thicker, you can do it thicker. Um, but I just wanted to get mine kind of as slim as possible. And then once you got those ripped down to the right width, I'll just cut two, the two side ones at full height. So I'll just measure um, both of the sides up and down and I'll cut those to that length. And then um, for the top and the bottom one, um, I will just measure the distance between those. So it'll be pretty much the measurement of the flag minus an inch and a half. And then I'll just be nailing those, nailing and gluing those at each of the corners. And then once I got those cut, uh, I got this sheet of I got this sheet of half inch plywood and I'm going to cut this to fit uh, inside the frame and then it will go um, at the back of it. Um, so once I have my borders cut, I'll just kind of set those and then that will sit at the back of them and then I, I can nail it through the frame uh, into the back of that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'll get, my, I'll get my sides cut and then I'll get my plywood cut and uh, we'll see how it looks. All right, so now that I got all my stuff cut, um, and these outside edges are gonna be flush with the outside edges of the flag, uh, just in case that helps you with your measurement. And then the reason it'll be three and a half inches inside is just because we do have the backers that are gonna go in there, and those will be three quarter inches. Um, and right now we're at roughly four and a quarter, so that will leave pretty much three and a half inches of space, and uh, that should be um, a good amount of space, but 
Uh, just before you do it, just make sure you measure whatever you're gonna be putting in it. And if you need to make it a little bit thicker or um, a little bit deeper, um, just make sure you check that first. Um, so now that I got all these cut, uh, I'm pretty much just gonna glue them and nail them. I'll just do it at all of the corners and then also along this seam right here um, where the plywood meets the one by. Um, so I'll go ahead and get this all uh, glued and nailed together. All right, so now that we got that all put together, uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a groove in the wood here, and uh, that's gonna help um, to open it. Um, so I think I'm just gonna do it like right between where these two backer strips are, and that'll be on this piece right here. Um, so you should be able to open it up just by grabbing uh, both of the sides if you use both of your hands to pull it out. Uh, but I did wanna go ahead and make um, something just similar to this. Um, right here in the middle um, and then that will allow you to get behind it uh, to pull it open and then hopefully it won't be as noticeable as um, screwing anything extra to the face to pull it open and the way I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna be using a jigsaw and I think I'll mark um, a half inch from the bottom and then um, I'm gonna have it just kind of fade away on either side uh, so I'll just kind of mark it out and then do my best to follow it uh, with the jigsaw. Um, you don't have to do this if you would rather just open it by, um, you know, just pinching both of the sides together and just kind of pulling it open. But I wanted to do this just, uh, just to give it another option for opening. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get that cut out real quick. All right, so I went ahead and got that cut out. Uh, I just realized that my GoPro, I don't think it was recording, so... Oh, unfortunately, I didn't get that on video, but um, I just set my my guide on here to 45 and then um, I just went along it and cut it out as best I could and then I took my orbital sander and then I kind of um, Smoothed it out because there was some rough edges in here um, So I got that smoothed out and then now we got a little bit of a handle down here or a little bit of a spot where we can grab it um, and that will help to open it up. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and seal up the flag. Um, I'm gonna use this Rust-Oleum uh, Gloss Clear uh, Ultra Cover Sealer, and uh, usually just one good coat of this uh, will give it a nice finish. And then the way you paint or stain your box is totally up to you. Um, I'm going to do a black around the border, and then on the inside of it, um, so I'll probably do this face and the sides black and then on the inside. I'm gonna do this uh, metallic finish gray um, I think that'll look kind of cool and then I'll also paint this on the back of the flag um, After I seal it I'll probably just seal the front and then I'll go ahead and use this stuff on the back And then maybe I'll just tape off a line around the edge just to make sure I don't get it on the edges or on the face of the flag um, and then also for this I'll probably just paint my black first and then I'll just use like my frog tape to tape off the edges and then I'll sp spray the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get these sealed and painted. All right, so now that we got these all painted, like I said, I did the side and the face of this one black, and then I did the inside this metallic gray, and then I actually just did the back of this black as well. Um, and now we're going to get the hardware put on. All right, so I just realized my camera wasn't recording for another video, um, but this is the hinge that I'll be using. Um, it's just a long hinge. It is an inch and a half by 30 inches. And it used to be the bright nickel finish. Um, so it was, I had kind of like a chrome finish. Um, but I went ahead and I just spray painted it black. Um, just so that it's not as noticeable. And it doesn't really stand out. Uh, and the way that I'm going to put it on there is first what you're going to do is. I just got these tiny little 
uh, chunks of wood here that I'll use as shims. Uh, they're about a sixteenth of an inch, just a little bigger than a sixteenth of an inch, not quite an eighth inch. And what I'm gonna do is put these in on either side and then I'm just gonna line this up um, so that it's flush with the top here and then so that the corners are lined up and I'm gonna put one of these on either side um, and that's just gonna give it enough room so that when this comes out and up, uh, it has enough space to clear it and it's not like rubbing or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put these, one of these in on either side. Uh, you don't have to use a piece of wood, you can use like a piece of cardboard or something just as long as it's uh, equal on both sides. All right, so it's gonna be like that and like that on either side. And then what I'm gonna do is just take this hinge and then I'll just kind of center it uh, from left to right which is, I think it's about three and a half inches off either side. And then what I'm gonna do is just line up, um, just pretty much put this so that it's right in the middle. Put the, the center of the hinge, pretty much just center it over that gap uh, on both sides. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill and screw all the screws all the way down, uh, making sure that it's lined up uh, the whole way. All right, so I got all the screws put in there. Uh, if you didn't want an exposed hinge, uh, you could always get um, some cabinet style hinges that go on the inside. Uh, the only reason I did this one is just to make it as simple as possible, uh, but you could definitely get some of the cabinet style hinges um, that would mount on the inside in the top corners, and then that way they wouldn't be exposed. Uh, but like I said, I just did this one just because it is the most simple but if you would like it to do it the other way, then that is perfectly fine. All right, and then now that we got the hinges put on there, uh, the next thing is you're gonna wanna put in our pistons. Um, so I actually already got mine put on. Uh, I wanted to make sure that they were in the proper place. So I just got one on each side. Uh, I can go ahead and link these in the description. They come in a four pack and I only use two. So I'll probably just use the other two for another concealment flag. Uh, you will have to put them together. They come as just the shafts like this and then you'll just have to pop in um, these pieces right here uh, they just pop out and then they just pop in really easily just like that and uh, for this top part your screw will go three quarter inches in and then it will go uh, two and a quarter inches off of that bracket that will be where your top screw goes and then the bottom one I just put that one in after I put the top one in uh, I just kind of centered it in there uh, and then for the sides um, it is centered roughly nine inches from the top right there and then it's roughly an inch and five eighths to the center of it uh, on the inside and then having it screwed in those spots that should give it enough strength to hold it up and then it should close real nicely also. So you can go ahead and get those put on there. All right, and then once you got those pistons put on there, the last thing that we have to do is just to fill it in. Um, so I just got a rifle bracket here. I got this from Walmart, and then I got this little uh, pistol magnet. Uh, this is I got from Sportsman's Warehouse. Um, you could also use just like, if you wanna try make gun hangers, out of wood you could try to do that but I just went ahead and just bought some and then another thing you could do is put shelving in here if you want to like if you want to put a divider halfway and if you want to put you know ammo on the bottom or whatever you might want to put in here you could always put dividers in here and shelves uh, so you can get pretty creative with it but I'm just gonna do it super simple with a rifle holder and a pistol holder uh, for now uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these put in and we'll see how it looks All right, so I went ahead and got those put in there. I uh, threw the hatchet in there just because, I mean, everybody should have a hatchet for home defense, right? And then this pistol right here, um, it gives you just a little bit of room behind it. So you can just go ahead and just pull it right off and then it just magnets right back on there. 
Uh, so there's plenty of room for you to pull it off and it comes off really easily. And then that just floats. Uh, and to secure to the wall, I just went ahead and screwed it through the back and I just marked out the studs and found the studs. And uh, if you have an interior wall, your studs should be 16 inches apart. So there'll be one in the middle here. And the first one's over here and then the other one is 32 inches over and it's just screwed in right here. And then that should make it nice and sturdy. Uh, I would highly recommend screwing it to the studs, otherwise it might fall off the wall and you really don't want it falling off the wall. Depending on what you have in here, uh, it could just be dangerous. Uh, and if you would like to put foam in it, uh, you could also do that. You could put the foam cutouts in there and cut it out so you could fit everything in there really nicely. Uh, I just wanted to keep this one more simple. But if you guys would like a more comprehensive concealment flag build, uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I know this one is really simple. I just wanted to do a really simple one first. Uh, just for starters, but I would like to make a bigger one that is a little bit more fancy and with more than one compartment. Um, so just let me know down below if you guys would be interested in something like that. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Also, you can check me out on Instagram. Uh, that's also where you can message me and I do love getting pictures of the work you guys have done. Um, so that is where you can send that over. Thank you guys so much for watching and good luck with your build.